And so to begin this explanation, we'll have to take a look through the ultrasonic cleaner at its structure and its components. So part of its important makeup consists of a circuit board wired to a transducer. And the transducer is firmly fixed to the bottom of the fluid tank. And it's the transducer that activates and vibrates at an ultrasonic frequency when the cleaner is turned on. And because the transducer is firmly fixed to the bottom of the fluid tank, this in turn vibrates the bottom of the tank at the same frequency and ultimately creates ultrasonic waves in the fluid. In order to be classed as ultrasonic however, the frequency from the transducer has to be 20 kHz or more. And it is of course amongst these waves that the item to be cleaned is submerged. But these waves are so small it can be difficult to notice them with the naked eye. And even though they are themselves difficult to see, their energies can be seen clearly. When I place this plastic container with tiny polystyrene balls within it into the ultrasonic tank and then turn it on, we can clearly see the energy of those waves moving the polystyrene. That's because the ultrasonic waves moving through the fluid hits the plastic container making it vibrate and in turn vibrating the polystyrene. So what's the significance of these ultrasonic waves then? Well, if we could see inside this tank in such a way that we could see these waves, we would see them moving out through the fluid like this away from the transducer that's creating them. And so let's pause there and see what's important about these waves. Well, each of them experiences high pressure on this side as they move up through the fluid at that ultrasonic speed. And whilst this side experiences high pressure due to the waves forcing through the fluid, this causes behind them a pocket of low pressure. Although not moving at ultrasonic speed, a boat propeller experiences these two types of pressures. As the propeller turns, this edge is under high pressure as it cuts through the water. And this movement causes a low pressure on the trailing edge. So similarly, we can see how these two pressures are generated by the ultrasonic waves. But it's what becomes of this low pressure area that is key to the ultrasonic cleaner's ability to clean that sets it apart from any other cleaning process. And what happens is fundamental to the reason it cleans so well. Because here, this low pressure creates tiny little microscopic bubbles. These are known as cavitation bubbles. And they're called this because each one is a cavity inside the water. So what's inside the cavities? What's inside each one of these bubbles? Well, it's simply steam or water vapour from the water boiling. But boiling point, does that mean the temperature inside the fluid has risen to 100 degrees centigrade? Actually, no. The temperature might be low, much lower than 100 degrees centigrade. In fact, it can do this with temperatures less than half that of boiling point. This amazing ability to reach boiling point with temperatures much cooler than 100 degrees centigrade is something that the ultrasonic cleaner can in fact achieve. And to explain how this can happen, we need to talk about pressures. At sea level, the pressure pushing down upon us from all of those air molecules above us that are attracted to the gravitational pull of the Earth's core is 14.7 pounds per square inch. And so this 14.7 pounds per square inch is also referred to as one atmosphere. And so it's here at sea level at 14.7 psi or one atmosphere that water will only boil at 100 degrees centigrade or 212 Fahrenheit, which is of course a boiling point familiar to us. And so interestingly, if we could lower this atmospheric pressure from 14.7 psi to something much lower, then the temperature required to boil this water would not need to be as high as 100 degrees centigrade. It would boil at temperatures much lower. And so it's the pressures here behind the tail of each ultrasonic wave that are low enough to create this type of boiling at temperatures lower than 100 degrees centigrade inside the ultrasonic tank. And we can see now with our ultrasonic waves that behind each wave there's that low pressure. And this is why water can boil in this area at low temperatures. But these cavitation bubbles are very short lived because as the ultrasonic waves moves up through the fluid, as we saw earlier, the pressure at the front edge of each wave is greater. And so as the wave that follows moves into the cavitation bubbles, it causes them to implode. 
and it's these imploding bubbles that are the vital part of the ultrasonic cleaning process and without them the ultrasonic cleaning process as we know it just wouldn't exist. Because unlike an exploding bubble which just keeps getting larger and larger until it pops, the imploding bubble this keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it pops releasing a pressure wave of energy outwards. So when we put our item for cleaning inside the ultrasonic tank and then turn it on, if we could see down to the microscopic level, we'd see that these bubbles are being produced and imploding and produced and imploding throughout the whole time the ultrasonic cleaner is in use. And this is happening in and all around the item that's being cleaned. So that means wherever the water can reach, this is likely to be happening. And this is why the ultrasonic cleaner is so good but why exactly do these imploding bubbles make the cleaning process so good? Well firstly, remember when we said when the bubbles implode they create that pressure wave of energy. Well it's this pressure wave that agitates and loosens the dirt and crud on the surface of the item that's being cleaned. As well as this, it's said that the bubbles can stick to the side of the item being cleaned and then when it implodes, it scrapes dirt off the surface in this way. And then the dirt of course is emitted into the fluid. But now we can see how the ultrasonic cleaner creates cavitation bubbles and how the bubbles can loosen the dirt. We can also see how it would be aided and made easier to remove this dirt in the presence of hotter water, which of course would help to dissolve the dirt, especially in the presence of a detergent, which as a whole would help to remove this dirt so much better. And so now you know why some ultrasonic tanks have increased heat settings and also why it's recommended that a detergent is used. But this is how, to the best of my knowledge and beliefs, how the ultrasonic cleaner works. And so now I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Please give me a like and subscribe if you haven't done already. Thank you for watching.